Hey there. So, in the 17th century, a group of thinkers created a new way of viewing the natural world and a new model of the universe. In this period encompassing these changes in the methodology of science and thought is known as a scientific revolution. And this occurred from about 1550 to 1700. In this video, I'll be giving an introduction to the scientific revolution, and in the second video, I'll be discussing the scientific revolution's key players and show how the scientific revolution changed the way people thought during this time period and influenced the Enlightenment, which was an intellectual social movement occurring alongside the scientific revolution. First, I think it's important to clarify what the scientific revolution was really all about. And so it wasn't that the science of the world changed, rather it was how people did science, or the methodology, that changed. Also these changes in how people thought were not revolutionary, and that new ideas replaced old ones overnight, rather the scientific revolution was a gradual process. But before we can really understand how incredible the, the scientific revolution was in terms of paving the way for new ideas, we first should look at the science and the process of thought during the Middle Ages. And so the science of the Middle Ages was known as natural philosophy. And natural philosophy was a mixture of ideas from Aristotle, from Ptolemy, another old guy, and Christian theology. Natural philosophy was deeply supported and defended by the church, and philosophers at this time supported the idea that God created a finite universe. Therefore, it was really inconceivable at the time that the world could be examined outside of this religious context. So pay attention of how Christianity was part of the Middle Age conception of the universe. And so the first person I'm going to talk about is Aristotle. He lived from 385 BC to 322 BC. So this guy Aristotle in the Aristotelian cosmos was based on common sense and what could be seen through observation. Thus because the earth appeared to stand still, Aristotle made Earth the fixed center of the universe and divided the cosmos into two realms. There was the terrestrial realm and then there was the celestial realm. The terrestrial realm contained the Earth and all matter inside the moon's orbit while the celestial realm was the realm of the heavens and all that beyond the moon's orbit. Aristotle also defined five different elements that were part of his universe, which these elements were defined by their qualities. There was earth, which was heavy and sunk to the universe's center, water, which was light and rested on top of the earth, air, which was even lighter and set on water, and there was fire, which was the lightest of all the elements and tended to rise above them all. And then lastly, there's this really strange element known as ether. And ether was considered perfect matter and only existed in the celestial realm. Another important figure contributing to the Middle Age view of the universe was Ptolemy. And Ptolemy was an Egyptian astronomer that lived from 90 AD to 168 AD. And Ptolemy was largely responsible for what is known as the geocentric theory. Now the geocentric theory stated that the Earth was at the center of the universe and all other planets revolved in circular orbits around the Earth. And that beyond the universe's limits was heaven, where God maintained the order of the universe. So therefore, as I mentioned before, this concept of the church in the medieval understanding of the universe really proved to be problematic in the scientific revolution because when these scientists began questioning the views of Ptolemy and Aristotle, it was almost like saying the church was fallible and that it could be wrong. 
So we'll see that as a common trend when we talk about the scientists in the next video. In addition to the Ptolemian and Aristotelian ideas that I just discussed, there are a few alternative lines of thought upon which the scientific revolution drew from that I think are worth mentioning. So first off, there was Hermeticism. And Hermeticism was this tradition that was kind of strange in that it was the tradition of magic and alchemy. And basically, Hermeticism taught that the world was infused with a single spirit that could be explored through mathematics as well as through magic. And then next there was Neoplatonism. And Neoplatonism was an alternative tradition developed by Renaissance humanists who discovered the works of the ancient Greek philosopher Plato. And basically Neoplatonism stated that reality was found in an unchanging world of forms rather than in the physical world and that the only way to describe the abstract world of forms was through mathematics. Platonic forms, I know, is kind of a difficult concept to understand, but what is really important from a European history standpoint is to recognize that the scientific revolution drew from some of the ideas of Neoplatonism. So don't really worry too much about the whole forms concept. By the beginning of the 1600s, these alternative traditions had melded into one approach to gaining knowledge known as the Platonic Pythagorean tradition. Followers of this tradition saw math as a key to understand nature. And so I think it's obvious how these three alternative traditions whose focus was on using mathematics to understand the universe contributed to some of the ideas generated during the scientific revolution. Lastly, I think it's also important to note that the Renaissance really helped set the scene for the scientific revolution because of the rise of universities as well as the study of classical texts and the focus that was on discovery and curiosity. Also in the 15th and 16th century, we have a increase in navigation and, and lots of improvements in navigational and explorational instruments, which could also be used to map and study the stars and planets. So this really, these instruments really allowed scientists during the scientific revolution to make the discoveries that they did. Okay, so now that we have a basic background in how people thought before the scientific revolution, I think we'll have a greater understanding of how groundbreaking and game-changing the ideas coming out of this period were. And so in the next video, I will discuss these ideas and the people who developed them. Thank you.